is getting some too as a young guy. So those those three, all, all three of those guys are doing pretty well in there so far, handling things pretty good. And uh, the guard spots, we got again a nice rotation in there. Paris and uh, Josh Fryer's rotating in there. Jacoby, uh, Trey Larue. So we got some Jack Jamison, some guys that are rotating the guard spots. So it's going pretty well so far. It's good to hear your voices in midseason form. All right, we'll go next to Austin Ward, Letterman Row. Hey, Stud, uh, when you mentioned uh, Josh Fryer, what is it about him that he's seemingly made a little bit of a, a jump here for you this spring? Well, I, I, again, his athleticism is what uh, excited me in recruitment. Uh, he was a basketball player. He's a guy that's 6'5", but he has the ability to bend and play really low. Uh, and those two things were the things that intrigued me about him when we first got him in recruiting. And it's only gotten better through training with Mick. And now he's getting stronger. He's got a little edge to him. And he's a guy that's got some grit. He's got some toughness. He shows up every day and he's learning and he's putting things together, but he's got some grit and I, and I like that. So that's what's kind of what's, what's got him going. All right, let's go next to Dan Hope from 11 Warriors. Dan? Yeah, Greg, obviously Paris is making that move from, you know, starting out at tackle to, you know, playing guard right now. Just how do you think he's handled that tra transition and what do you think can make him a successful guard? Well, he, he is the same thing as Fryer. Uh, he is a kid that's very, very mentally tough. Both those kids are. And, and without that first, you wouldn't be able to make that transition uh, because there's a little bit of difference sometimes between tackles and guards as far as athleticism and finesse and toughness and grit. And both those guys have the ability to do that and go inside. And Paris is such a student of the game. I mean, he studies the game. He's in my office. Sometimes I got to kick him out because I'm sick and tired of seeing him because he's in there every day wanting to know this and wanting to know that. How do I get an edge on this? So his attention to detail and his toughness and I want to play, Coach, is, is what, why he's made the transition so smooth so far. All right, next up we'll go to Brendan Gulick, Buckeyes now on SI. Hey, Stud, kind of a two-part question here. One, what's the, the one thing that you really hope you can accomplish here over the last two weeks of spring practice, or is this just continued reps and, and building chemistry? Uh, well, and, and two, how, how do you think this group is, uh, you know, handling the quarterback battle that uh, seems to be neck and neck right now? Uh, I don't think they have a clue about the quarterback battle. <laughs> I think they're so focused on trying to get better. You know, it's funny. I was just in the meeting writing this down. Of all the guys that we got that are here right now, there's 11 guys in my room that it's their first spring. 11 guys. And I, I just sat there. I was just talking to Jerry. I said, you know, you think these guys are veterans and those things because they've been here, but they lost last spring. They lost last summer. They lost the camp. So they've lost a year of development and here's 11 guys that I've got a certain expectation level about, uh, which it's not going to change. It's going to stay there. But then I realize this is the first time that 11 of these dudes have gone through spring. So instead of getting ahead of myself, I'm just enjoying the fact that we've had nine solid practices and we can go get some technique work and we can develop some toughness because until that foundation's built, you're not going to go on. You're not going to further start talking about how we can do things and what you can do and those things until we build that foundation. And I've, I've enjoyed it. I think they're, they're buying in, but it's still, it's still 11 of those guys are still learning how to get this done, how to be mentally tough. Some are further along than others, but they're all developing through it. So that's going to be my focus till the end of this spring is getting that foundation built in a lot of young guys because the Thayers and the Knicks, they're coming along. They know how to do this. They know how this goes. They know what they need to work on to take them to an elite level. But it's those other 11 or 12 guys that, that need that foundation built, and that's what we're working on. All right, let's go next to Doug Lamarice, Cleveland.com. Hey, Stud, when you have two veteran tackles like Thayer and uh, NPF and a great young tackle prospect like Paris, what was your decision-making process like in deciding that it would be Paris as the guy who would work at guard this spring? And did you give any consideration to maybe moving one of those tackles inside? I absolutely did. I absolutely did. And, and the, the reason I didn't was, again, right now, and again, again, it could change. I don't think it's going to, but 
It was to keep those two guys. They were two of the best tackles in the country last year. They proved it. They're growing. They're, 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 they can help those guys inside and to have two guys on the edge like those two guys that can protect that, those young quarterbacks, that was really what I thought was going to be the best for us. And Paris's ability, his athleticism, his quickness with him and Fryer, because you forget, Fryer's a fantastic tackle too. So is Dewan. There's two more tackles that are really, really, can really be good tackles in my opinion. But those two kids, ability to bend, their quickness, their agility, allowed them to go into that guard spot without changing the edge protection for our young quarterbacks. So that, that was really one of the major factors. Thank you, Ted. All right, let's go next to Tony Gerdeman, Buckeye Scoop. Greg, um, regarding Harry, is he, you're looking for your best five. Yeah. Safe to assume he's one of the best five and will he be in the mix at center in the, in the preseason? Absolutely. He absolutely, there's no question. I, I, you know, I, I would assume he's going to be one of the best five. But again, these young guys are getting the reps and getting the work. But when, this, when the preseason comes, Harry's going right back into that mix, whether it be in center or whether it be a guard. But we're, again, you're right. We're working on the best five. And I would assume he'd be one of them, but, but we'll see. Thanks. We'll go next to Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. So if I remember correctly, Harry didn't, uh, he's one of those 11 who's going through technically his first full spring here. But if I remember correctly, you guys were doing FaceTime calls with him all throughout the spring and pretty much keeping him up to speed to the point that once he got here, he was good enough to be able to earn that number two center role. Um, Donovan Jackson is also not here and it's kind of a similar rated guy. Are you guys doing anything similar with him? And then also when he gets here, can he start? Is he going to be in that mix? Well, number one, yes, we are doing the same things. He's been in our meetings through the spring. He's got the manual. He's got the things. We've talked about drill tapes. We've watched drill tapes. And, yes, he's going to have the opportunity to come in there and be one of the five just like anybody else does. All righty. We'll go next to Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Hey, Greg, can you kind of give us an update on where Dewan Jones stands right now and just what sort of role you expect from him this season? He's really well. He's a little banged up right now, so I haven't had him for, for a couple of days here. But up until that point, he was really, really doing well. He was coming along. He's got his weight down uh, to, to the best it's been in a long time. He's in, he's in good shape and, and really was really playing well. So, again, there's another guy that, you know, can allow you as he comes along and develops. And, again, his first spring, as he continues to come along and he continues to develop, Number one, it gives you depth, but it also gives you an ability to play different guys at different places. So I was very pleased with how he was doing. Do you expect him back? Yes. In the spring? Yes. All righty. Next up, Bill Landis, the athletic. Hey, Stud. Um, a couple of years ago, I guess when Ryan really first took over, there seemed to be a pretty major emphasis on, on kind of restocking your room. Um, maybe, I don't know if improving the recruiting was, is the right way to put it or not, but just adding some more guys there and really building up that depth. And it seems like two years later, you've done that. Um, and I know it's not complete and the job's never done, but just how do you feel about where your room is compared to where it was a couple of years ago? Oh, I, I couldn't be more excited. I think you hit it on the head. Everything you said right there is correct. Uh, I know, I know the state of the room and you guys do too. What it was when I got here, I had for the first two years, I had five people. I stayed up at night because if somebody went down, I was like, Oh boy, we better get the punt team ready. That was my feelings. And to, you're right to have that depth back in the room now. You know, and again, what you just said showed at Michigan State last year. We lose those guys the night before the game. We didn't lose those guys a week before the game. You know, we lost those guys and, and a couple of those COVID guys right away. And for those kids to jump in there and play like that against a defense like that, that's a testament to what we've done. And, th and that to me, those kids were ready to go. They knew through the whole COVID thing at any minute Somebody was going to have to jump in there, but it wasn't tested and proven until that point. And when they jump in there, that gives all those guys in that room confidence that when my number's called, or how about if I just go challenge this guy? They are Mumford's pretty good, but how about if I go beat him out? And now that that's in that room. So all the other guys now, when you go to practice, you better be at your best. Because if you're not, that guy's very well capable of doing the job as well. And that's what it should be. When you've got an offensive line room that has depth, and th those things can happen and still instill confidence in everybody around them. So you're exactly right. That's a fact. 
All righty, let's go next to Dave Biddle, 247. Hey, Greg, um, can you delve into just how much Matt Jones improved maybe from 2019 to 2020? Was he your most improved guy? And just are you surprised with where he's at at this point? You know, I, you're right. He is one of the most improved. I would absolutely say that. I think, you know, with some guys learning and, and, and getting themselves prepared is as much a mental thing as it is a physical thing. And Matt is a guy that's always had the physical tools. He is so strong. He's quick. But eventually it gets to the point where, you know what, I'm tired of not being a starter. And a little light goes off or whatever you want to call it. I don't have a right word for it. But it's I'm sick and tired of watching. And all of a sudden, the demeanor in everything that you do, the attention to detail and everything that you do, the toughness, carrying out a drill, that's what Matt's done. He's hit that point where, you know what, this is it. And he showed it that Michigan State game, and then he showed it the next two games that he played. So his turnaround has been amazing. And, yeah, I, I would definitely say he's one of those, and he's carried it over to this spring. He's really doing well. He got sick and missed a day or two with, with, with a flu bug. But since then, the kid has been a different guy. And I'm really excited about where he's going. Thank you. All right, we'll go next to Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch. Greg, a uh, question about Nick Petit Frere. Um, I guess, where do you see him being able to make the, the biggest jump or improvement? This will be his second full year as a starting. The, the thing that, yeah, you're right. And the thing that, uh, that we're focusing on with Nick right now is his pad level. He, he, he's a tall guy. And for him to bend at times, it's a strain. So we've been working on his pad level and making him a more productive run blocker by getting him to bend. So we've worked a bunch of, of bending things. We've got his squat up, getting his legs more powerful so that he can become a more dominant run blocker. His pass blocking excelled. That was last year's focus, really, going into last season, make him an elite pass protector. He's well on his way. His feet are done. He's doing those things there. But what we've got to do is we've got to make him an elite run blocker, not just a good run blocker. I would say that's where he was. He's got to become elite, and that's what we're focusing on now. All righty, next up, Tim May from Letterman Row. Tim. Thank you, Mike. Hey, uh, Stud, by the way, what's it like to have a nickname Stud? That must be cool, but then past that, uh, uh, Thayer Munford, uh, can you describe him in a nutshell of why you think he now is elite and where, how far has he come in that regard? I can't tell you how far he's come. It's unbelievable. Uh, it is he realized, I think, you know, the, the, the whole thing goes back to that back surgery. Uh, if you want to trace it all the way back in, in, in the chronology of the thing is he hurt that back and he missed eight months of lifting, of developing, of everything. And he came back that next season and played and he played pretty well, but he knew he wasn't playing at a level that he was proud of. Not only us, but a level that he thought he could play at. Coach, I'm so much better than that. Then he gets a year of training in the off season. He's as strong as he's ever been. He's moving as quick as he's ever been at 320 pounds. And his attention to detail and technique totally has changed. And I think at the end of the season, when we sat down and talked about it, obviously the degree was important, but more, more so is coach. I haven't peaked yet, man. I can be better than this. And I think he realized that part of the reason that he came back was to attain that level of, I'm not just really good. I'm the best. And he's got a chance. He's got a chance to be the best tackle in the country. If he wants to focus on it and pick up where he left off last year and do those things, he's got a chance to be the best. And that's really what he's chasing. He's chasing the fact that he wants to be a lead. He wants to be a first rounder. He wants to be the best in the game. And I think that's what's driving him. And it's really, really good. Ready next up, Jeremy Birmingham, Leonard Monroe. Hey, Greg, with, with 11 guys that have never taken a spring snap with a bunch of other veterans returning, how are you able to work in Ben, Chrisman, and Zen Mulholski this winter and spring to make it valuable for them as opposed to just kind of standing by watching? Brilliant question. And, and, and the, the problem, the first week, they missed the whole first week due to sickness. So that puts us a little bit more behind the eight ball. But the, the thing about those guys is – the time that we get in the spring, Jeremy, with individual drills and segmented pod circuits against the defensive line, that's where they have to excel, and that's where they're getting most of their work right now. And the good thing is Coach Day will always do 
we'll always rotate three groups in a team period to get them reps. It's less than the other guys, there's no doubt. But like you said, that's the crucial, the development of those young kids in, in the drill situation, when we have time and in individual, that's where they're getting a ton of their work right now because their foundation obviously is behind those guys. To take a guy like that and throw him out in a team period and say, hey, here, go run all these plays that we have, block all these protections, their mind's swimming. So to put them in that situation is not productive. The foundation of technique and how to be tough and how to use the, your hands to block, that's where I am with those guys. And the good thing is in the springtime, we get the majority of time to do that with those guys. All right, we'll do two more. Uh, first one to Patrick Murphy, 247. Patrick. Hey, Greg, you talked about building that depth, but how big has versatility been in doing that? It seemed like last year you were able to put guys at different spots and, and not miss a beat. How important has their versatility been? I can't, I can't tell you how important because there's a lot of times that you, you'll go somewhere where, and, you know, this guy's a backup and that guy's a backup. And this guy's that backup, meaning there's not a lot of versatility. But the fact that, like, you go back to, to having athletic guys and recruiting athletic guys that can play multiple positions. You know, the Harry Millers go back to, to Michael Jordan, go back to all the guys that have played multiple spots. The ability to still get your best five. And if a guy goes down, who's the best six? It might be a tackle that has to go to guard. It might be a backup guard that has to go to tackle if those guys aren't developed. So the ability to mix and match those guys because of, number one, their athleticism and the ability to play both those positions. And number two, what is their knowledge? Do they have a tremendous knowledge of both those spots and can they handle going on the edge or could they handle coming inside? And the fact that we have guys that are, you know, I got a, I got a smart room. I mean, I got smart guys. I mean, they, they study so much, their attention to detail, especially for the young guys that are in there asking questions all the time and wanting to learn. They want to learn everything. And when you have guys that are like that, you can move them with those guys around and still come up with a cohesive unit, even if you have a couple injuries. All right, and we'll wrap Coach Stud up today with Spencer Holbrook from Letter Monroe. Hey, Greg, uh, what, do you, what do you like most about Josh or – or about Luke Whipler and, and what have you seen out of him that makes you think he can, he can take another step forward? I'll tell you, he was a, and I, and I'm not, he's a tough, tough Jersey guy. First of all, I love that about him. He's rugged. But the second of all, he is a, I'll tell you a story. He, you know, the national championship game ends and those kids had a chance to go home and I'm home the next day and Luke calls me and he's in the indoor and he's filming drills and sending them to me. It's not 24 hours since then. And he's in the Woody doing drills, filming a drill and saying, coach, you, you know, take a look at this and critique me, man. Because I, I want to work on this. And that's what I love. And that, that kid stayed here the entire time. Most guys went home for two weeks and saw their families. And I'm good. That's fine. This kid's in here doing that every single day. That's how important it is to him. And, and I sat in here and watched drills of him every day. And we watched film on Zoom and we did things. And I'm like, that, a guy that cares that much and is that dedicated and has the tools, he's got quickness. He's really good now at snapping the ball and stepping. He's got a rhythm now to the, with the ability to do those things. And, and he studies the game. He knows every position. He knows all those things. And the time and effort that he puts into it is something I love. A guy that works that hard, you're, you're going to be successful, period. And that's one of the things I love about the kid. All righty, Coach. I think I speak for everyone. I say thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you again. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you.